Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Becca. I'm a life and mindset coach and today I'm so excited to be diving into one of my favorite ever topics which is confidence. Today I'm going to be giving you real tangible tips to cultivate confidence. Confidence is built. There'll be no fluff in this video. There'll be no bullshit in this video. I am not going to tell you to inhale confidence and exhale doubt. None of that. Here are 10 of my best tips that have taken me from insecure as fuck to the most confident I have ever been and also having it reflected to me from others very, very often that I'm the most confident person that they know. First and arguably the most important tip is to build self-trust. To drive this point home, I am gonna call in the reinforcements, and the reinforcements are the dictionary. Let's look up the definition of confidence, shall we? The feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something, firm trust. A feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one's own abilities or qualities. The one I wanna focus on here, the feeling or belief that one can rely on something or someone. Do you hear that? That is the definition of confidence. So when we are talking about building self-trust, that means becoming someone that you can rely on and being true to your word. Let me give you an example. You and I, we become friends, okay? And I say, hey girl, hey, do you wanna meet me for coffee on Wednesday afternoon? And you say, oh my God, Becca, I would love to. Thank you for inviting me. You go to the coffee shop, you're sitting around, you're waiting for me, I'm nowhere to be found, right? I ghost, I bail on you, okay. For some reason, you give me a second chance. Don't actually do that. I reschedule with you for Sunday morning. You show up Sunday morning, we're meeting for brunch, I don't show up. How much do you feel that you can rely on me in this moment? Probably not a lot. How much confidence do you have in me as a human being and also in our friendship or relationship together? Probably not a whole lot. Why would you trust yourself when all you have given yourself is evidence as to why you should not trust yourself? Every single time you say you're gonna wake up earlier and you don't, you're gonna work out after work and you don't, you're gonna cut off that friend but you don't, you're gonna stand up to your boss but you don't. There are so many ways in which we make promises to ourselves and we don't hold up. And so in that we've learned that we cannot trust ourselves and why would we have confidence in ourselves if we cannot trust ourselves? We have to take the promises that we make to ourselves seriously in order to cultivate true confidence. I am a woman of my word. If I say I'm going to do something, no matter how difficult it is, how much I don't want to, how many other things I could be doing instead, I fucking do it. And I never disappoint myself. I never go back on my word. And if I set a goal or a promise or an intention, I follow through every single time. And that has made me the most confident I've ever been in my life. Pick one thing you want to do, whether it be wake up earlier, go for a walk, work out, meditate, read 10 pages of a book, whatever it is, and stick to it for 30 days. No bullshit, no excuses. I don't want to hear any of that. Stick to it and let me know how much your confidence increases. Tip number two is getting to know yourself on the deepest possible level. Ideally, we want to know ourselves better than anybody else does, but the truth is many of us do not. A truly confident person know themselves very, very well. They know their strengths, they know their weaknesses, they know what triggers them, they know what makes them happy, they know what they like, they know what they don't like, they know what they're available for, they know everything under the sun. It is time to start putting as much time, effort, and energy into getting to know yourself as you do getting to know your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your friend, your colleague, whoever it may be. You deserve to know yourself really, really fucking well and cultivating true confidence comes from knowing who you actually are. The personal development books, the personal development podcasts, the coaches, the mentors, all the tools you need are out there waiting for you in order to help guide you into understanding who you are and what makes you you, which in turn will bring you true confidence. Tip number three is to create new beliefs or affirmations with evidence. I already know what you're thinking. I already know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, another person saying affirmations. Uh-huh, you've been hearing about affirmations for years. Have you ever tried them? Have you ever actually utilized them? That's what I thought. So listen up. Our thoughts create our reality. Our subconscious mind will never ever make us a liar 
and our mind is always collecting evidence that validates our beliefs. If I believe that I'm not good enough, if I believe that I'm not worthy of love, if I believe that I'm dumb, you betcha, my thoughts are gonna create my reality surrounding those beliefs, and I'm always gonna be collecting evidence to make sure that that stays true for me, okay? If I think that I'm the baddest bitch on the planet, and I ingrain that belief, into my brain, I'm always going to be collecting evidence for that instead. You have been living your whole life with a certain set of beliefs. How are we feeling? How are we feeling? Probably not very good. It's time to collect affirmations that you wish were true for you, okay? If that is, I'm the baddest bitch on the planet and that feels really, really icky to you right now because it's very far from what you're used to or how you're actually feeling, you can start with, I am becoming the baddest bitch on the planet or every day I'm closer to being the baddest bitch on the planet. But what we wanna do is we wanna take anywhere from one to 10 beliefs or affirmations I am lovable as an example. At the end of the day, I actually want you to start collecting evidence on how that is true. Maybe you had a coffee date with your mom and at the end of it she said, I love you so much honey, that was such an amazing coffee date. That is proof right there that you are loved and you are lovable. So take those affirmations, write them down and in the morning or in the evening or both, start creating evidence on how that is actually true for you this is how you reprogram your subconscious mind. This is brain surgery. Choosing beliefs and affirmations that actually serve you and align with the person you wanna be instead of allowing the same dialogue that's been playing your entire life to play out is a beautiful way to start to cultivate true, unshakable confidence. And you are the baddest bitch on the planet. Tip number four is the look good, feel good method. Now, there is nothing quite like putting on an outfit that makes you feel comfortable in your own skin and makes you feel beautiful. For me personally, I am not getting dressed up to the nines every single day. I don't know about you, but I like to be very, very comfortable. It's really important to block out the noise of what you're supposed to be wearing and what is in right now and actually find your unique sense of style. I personally really, really enjoy and also feel incredibly confident when I am in oversized clothing. I have been like this since I was a little girl. I would literally be maybe a size small or medium and I would buy an extra, extra large. This has always been me. I love graphic tees. I love oversized things with biker shorts. That is my style and so I always feel confident. If you are not leaving the house all day, if you work from home or whatever it might be, it's still really important to take care of yourself and that's why I have invested in quality loungewear. Even if I'm not gonna see another human for the rest of the day, maybe the rest of the week, I still make sure I get up, I do a slick back bun if my hair hasn't been washed in a couple days, I still put my little gold hoops in and I put my loungewear on and I put my sunscreen on and a little bit of oil, maybe a little bit of highlighter and I feel confident and I feel comfortable. It's not about doing full beat every single day and wearing a fancy sexy dress it's not about that it's what makes you feel comfortable and confident in finding your sense of style look good feel good try it out let me know what you think tip number five is a negativity detox let me ask you a question have you ever met a confident radiant magnetizing infectious person who complained all day long gossiped, bitched about everything, and was a complete asshole to themselves? Me neither, so listen up. We're going on a negativity detox, okay? Not only do you deserve to be a positive, optimistic person, but other people deserve that as well, okay? It's time to ditch the gossiping as a form of connection. It's time to ditch the complaining and start being grateful. And it's also time to stop making fun of yourself. This is coming from a girl who literally thrived on self-deprecating humor. Self-deprecating humor is not cute. It's not a good look. Seeing someone be like, oh my God, sorry, I look homeless. Like, no, you don't look homeless. Don't talk about yourself like that. You deserve a lot better and we know your thoughts create your reality. 
it can be very draining to be around people and also to be a person that is constantly in that negativity mindset so i challenge you i invite you eliminate that negativity eliminate the gossiping the bitching the complaining the inner mean dialogue eliminate all of it for even 30 days you will be shocked at how you feel and how transformative that act is on your life tip number six boundaries 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 how come we all don't have prada bags gucci bags louis vuitton bags i'll tell you why high value things are expensive and they're hard to get and so are you it's okay to be very very selective of your time it's okay to want to keep yourself in an optimum frequency and to say no to the things that are going to threaten or take you out of that frequency we are allowed to be selective we are allowed to have high standards and we are allowed to share with other people what we are and are not available for there is one thing i want you to remember about boundaries boundaries without consequences are just suggestions if you tell someone that you're not willing to tolerate a certain behavior anymore and then they still continue to do it and disrespect you and nothing changes that is not a boundary that is a suggestion be ruthless and be selective in who you allow into your space who is in proximity to you really really matters and it plays a huge contributing factor into who you will become you are allowed to have boundaries they do not make you a bitch you are just high value number seven leave your comfort zone right Regularly. We've heard it before, we've heard it a million times, but it is true. Growth does not come when you stay in your cute, comfortable, little comfort zone for the rest of your life. I know there are things that you want to do. I know that there are hobbies that you want to take up. I know there's a coffee shop you want to go to. I know there's a workout class you want to go to, but you don't because it's outside of your comfort zone. I cannot tell you the amount of things that I have done that I would have never ever believed that I would have ever had the courage to do. There is such power in doing hard things and one by one we go out and we do things that we thought we couldn't or wouldn't do and after we do them we're like wow I did that. An example for me is actually cold plunging. I would have never thought that I would willingly put my body into ice cold water i would have never thought i would have done that if i was in the ice it was probably an emergency but i went and i tried something new i met a ton of new friends and now i do it regularly and i willingly put myself in uncomfortable new environments on the regular in order to make me a more resilient and emotionally intelligent person it is one of the best things i've done to cultivate confidence in my life I invite you to think of something you've always desired to do and maybe you haven't because you don't want to go by yourself or you're nervous or shy and just go do it. Maybe the first five minutes will be a little bit uncomfortable, but I promise you will be so proud of yourself and you will prove to yourself that you can do hard things. Tip number eight is to start embodying the confident person that you want to become. Some people call this fake it till you make it. I don't really resonate with that language, but what I do know is that embodying the person that you want to become is part of the manifestation process. So if you're trying to be a more confident person, when you wake up in the morning, ask yourself, what would a confident person say? What would they do? What would their morning routine look like? What would their friends look like? What conversations would they be available for? How would they do their makeup? What would they wear? Like just asking yourself all of these questions in order to get into the frequency of the type of person that you're trying to become. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So if you're trying to be a confident person but you haven't always been a confident person, it's time to change up what you're doing and who you're being in order to become that confident version of yourself. Tip number nine is to discover your core values. I teach about core values in my life coaching program and they are so, so transformative. But essentially, core values are the underlying driving forces that run our life. So many people are not living in alignment with their core values and so they feel disconnected and unaligned. And so when we are talking about core values, if you are someone who has a goal of being a healthier person or being a fit person, 
It is possible that that's a goal for you, but it doesn't mean that it's your core value, okay? If I say I want to be a healthier person and I book a workout class every single night, but actually what happens is that I cancel it because at the end of the night, I would actually just go home and spend time with my family instead of going to a workout class. It is more likely in that situation that my core value is family and not health or fitness. When we can identify our one to five main core values in our lives, it makes us a lot more confident in making decisions for ourselves and on a daily basis because we can always compare the choice that we're making to our core values. If I want to be a healthier person and I'm deciding whether or not I want to go to McDonald's for lunch or I want to drive home and make myself a nutrients dense meal, if I reflect on my core values and my core value is health, it's very, very clear that option two is the best option in order to get me closer to my goals. This also allows us to not feel guilty for saying no or being unavailable for things because they are not in alignment with our core values. Living in alignment with our core values makes us a very confident person because we are always saying yes to things that are important to us and getting us closer to the person we want to be instead of saying yes to things that we're not actually available for and are getting us farther away to the person we actually want to be in our lives. Tip number 10, the final tip of the day, nothing is real nothing is real bestie i want to remind you we live on a floating rock it's not that deep it's not that serious and the life that you are experiencing right now and the life that everybody around you is experiencing right now is an illusion it's a construction of your own mind your own thoughts and your own beliefs no one is experiencing this life in the same way there are so many people that get to the end of their life and have regret. They didn't follow their dreams. They weren't the person they wanted to be. They didn't tell that person that they loved them. And all because why? Because we are so terrified of what other people think of us but it doesn't actually matter. Other people's opinions and judgments are actually a reflection of their own insecurities and their own mind and not you. Life is so short. I hate to be this person, but you could walk out your front door right now and get smoked by a bus like Regina fucking George, okay? We put off our happiness, our joy, our confidence, chasing our dreams because we think one day. One day is not guaranteed. This day is not guaranteed. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Live the life you want to live. Be authentically and unapologetically yourself. Be you, chase your dreams, do all the things. Live your life to the fullest. It's not guaranteed and we live on this floating rock together. We only have one life. The days are long, but the years are short. Do it for you. Live this life to the absolute fullest so you don't have to get to the end of it and have regrets. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you loved all these tips on confidence. I would love for you to comment below and let me know what one was your favorite. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, Confident Queens.